here handy friends. I want to show you how to identify rose hips. So I'm out here at a, a marshy lake area and rose hips, they like to grow along uh, open paths. They love sunlight. They grow off of rose bushes. So these are dogwood uh, rose hips and from a dogwood rose and they're wild. They're the, t the smallest ones uh, rose hips available and uh, I've been collecting a lot of them out in the wild and I'm doing some different things with them at home. They have 20% more vitamin C than oranges and like I said they like to grow down open paths so down the trails in different ways you'll find them along the edges not necessarily on the water but uh, definitely not in a closed woods need to have sunlight. So here we see the rose hips. Um, all the leaves have fallen off of this rose bush here. And the rose hips um, can be orange, orangey or red. And these are turning red as the sunlight penetrates them. Um, some that have had more sunlight are a little bit more red. And you could tell these. this is a rose bush because it has really sharp thorns. Um, and identifying these rose hips is the berries in clusters and then also the um, tips on the edge from where the rose budded and so a rose hip is from a, a rose that did not get picked if you pick the rose you will not have rose hips um, these are wild rose hips and these can be dried with the seeds in them because they're so small you just have to double strain to get the hair out So I wanted to show you, these are a little bit bigger. I'm out here in the wild. These happen to be round. There's also some like almost teardrop shaped ones that are a little bit more oblong. Um, I haven't seen any of those out here or I would add that to the clip. But I wanted to show you these, this bush behind me. You see how full it is? And see that they're reaching, they're reaching for the light. And so these, this is along the marsh. Um, my foot's in a chunk of mud. And these have grown, these have grown here. Um, reaching for the sun and they were roses in the summertime so if you're worried about identifying rose hips then go through somewhere that you know that land that you trust and um, identify wild roses and then come back after the first frost and you'll be able to see these kind of sticking out like a sore thumb and so this is a different kind of wild rose than the first smaller ones I showed you and you can see the leaves the leaves are still on um, these rose hips here in this whole bush whereas the little ones are more in the direct sunlight and all the leaves have fallen off um, We've already had snow on the ground and we just happen to have a really nice day today Wanted to get out here and show you these uh, This this brown part right here. This is actually part of the rose And so that's what that little nub is on top when you you remove that when processing and uh, that's just dried up It's the middle of the rose and then then come the rose hip um, so here we go I want to show you how to identify rose hips. This is one of the most easiest things um, to identify. And again, just the smaller thorns uh, as of a rose and not long ones. Um, the closest thing you could probably get it confused with is a barberry bush. And those, th those thorns are really long and there's no tip, there's no head on that barberry. Like this is... Uh, the dirtiness of the rose so you're going to take that off when you harvest it and see there the inside of that hip so you can just peel it like that that's the part that you eat right there really good just make sure you've got none of those hairs in there uh, the hair it's got itching hair in it but you just peel this outer layer off and the seeds are on the inside let me show you this Oop. I lost her. Should have planned on that. But anyway, the seeds and the itching hair are on the inside here. I'm going to peel that outer layer off. Get those seeds out of there. I have had no hairs in here. These big ones are big enough to where you can see it. So 20% more vitamin C than, a, than an orange. Yum. And also, excuse me, when you're harvesting, you want to harvest ethically. So harvesting 10% or less 
and leaving enough for the wild. That's what they are intended for. So don't be greedy. And also, you don't know if that area is harvested by other people, so you want to keep that in mind too. They might take 10% if everyone came and took 10%. It just wouldn't be good. Um, that's called ethical, eth ethical forage, foraging and harvesting. So these are really good. Kind of tastes uh, like a cranberry slash apple. And they are related to the apple family. So a little snack in the woods. If you like what you see, please give me that thumbs up. And don't forget, please subscribe. Feel free to reach out for me. Send me any comments. And stay handy, friends.